means that you can have some element of control. Right, that it's not mysterious. Actually, what I would say going along with that is there's also been an immense amount of trial and error. And I mean, I've made mistakes. I've gotten things totally goofed up. I've <laughs> gone down I've gone down blind alleys yeah. with gouging machines. Um, but I always learn something if I can, you know, keep my head on my shoulders about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure so. you're handing a lot of that wonderful knowledge down to your students as well. So it will be preserved <laughs> for our, your legacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. It's it's funny, you know, not everybody is mechanically inclined, and that's fine. Um, but... ahem, ahem. <laughs> <laughs> I have dear friends who are just, you know, astounding artists, beautiful players, but they just have no patience, no inclination to work on a gadging machine. And it makes me feel good to be able to help them if they need the help. So it's, yeah, I enjoy that. Great. Well, and they're thankful for you, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What advice do you have for opus who are on the audition circuit regarding reads? Yeah, so that's a, that's a hot topic for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, part of any audition preparation, I suppose, is read preparation giving yourself the largest number of choices possible, making sure that when you get to wherever you're going, and often it's going to be an unfamiliar place, you know, that you have, you have a box full of reads, hopefully, mm -hmm. that you can make the best choice for yourself for the, the given situation. Some advice that I got, I think that that has been really useful to me, and I've said it to other people, I tell, I tell it to anybody who wants to listen, is that when you're choosing the read for the audition, when you're actually there and you're going to go out and going to play, choose the read that is the most comfortable, the most responsive, not the one that you think that has the most, most voluptuous tone, you know, mm -hmm. because whatever you consider to be a beautiful tone might not be the beautiful tone that somebody on the other side of the audition screen is is thinking of you know mm -hmm. so people i think will hear more your comfort and your fluency and your flexibility so i would guide somebody in that direction that choose the read that is most comfortable for you to play and largely probably that lines up with something that is pleasing for you to listen to as the performer that is such excellent advice and building on that, you are known to have a, a very high level of refinement and polish to your reads and meticulous control <laughs> of the instrument. What, what techniques and strategies do you implement to coax your reads to these next level? The way you set that up is very flattering. Thank you, Courtney. The more that you demand of your playing, the better the reads are going to get. That's probably no secret to anybody. Um, so I would hope that... I don't, I don't feel complacent ever, you know, mm -hmm. even if I've enjoyed a performance that I've given, if it's a good memory, if I feel like it's gone well, there are always, and I'm sure you two feel the same way, there are always things that you wish could have been a bit better, or you think to yourself, oh, I, I hope I get another crack at that so that I can try this or do this better. Um, so it's a, it's a fine balance between, you know, questing for something better and, picking it apart to the level that you can enjoy it. So I feel like I'm always trying to walk that line. Mm -hmm. um, yes. As far as like, you know, actual things that I do in order to try and refine a read, to try and make it more finished, obviously a really sharp knife is important. <laughs> I feel like I'm spending <laughs> a lot of my life sharpening knives. Nice. Being able to take off just the tiniest whisper of cane at the at the end you know cuz sometimes just adjusting for symmetry and balance with a really sharp knife can make the difference between something that sings and something that kind of falls flat maybe the, going back to the question about read tests something i didn't say that's a it's more of a visual test is closing the read on the plaque for symmetry yeah i, I live by that i mean oftentimes if i get towards the end of a, the process of making a read or trying to finish a read and it feels a little bit stuck if I, you know, take a look at, at the symmetry, how it closes on the plaque, if it closes the same, uh, both blades, then that helps me kind of, and I like your word coax, it helps me coax it towards something that I am really going to enjoy using. But yeah, I I really do enjoy, and I, I crave, I guess I could say, fluency on the instrument, you know, homogeneity of mm. tone, hopefully, 
ease of low note response, yes. um, you know, all of the things that everybody wants, you know, <laughs> <laughs> high notes that sit up effortlessly, yes. you know. So I guess it's just a matter of, and this goes for, you know, for one's playing too, I think that, you know, if you can have as clear a picture in your own mind of what you're going for, of what you want it to be like, then you have a better chance of getting towards it or at least getting close towards it. Nick Stovall, thanks so much for being a guest on Read Talk today. And thanks to all of you for listening. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. We'd love to hear from you. Write to us and send us your read-making queries at readtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Sending good vibes from our read desk to yours, I'm Margaret Marco. And I'm Courtney Miller. Courtney Miller.